Hey guys, another day, another Poshmark Q&A. Here we go. First question, can you make a separate video on how to make consistent sales on Poshmark without pricing things too low so you don't make any profit? But in the middle price range where people actually want to buy stuff, I know sharing takes forever. Maybe that's why I never sell a lot of things. Okay, so I've made a shit ton of videos with tips and tricks on how to make sales. But basically what it comes down to is, yes, sharing is very important. Um, I mean, you said it yourself. You, it seems like you don't share often, so that could be a thing. Um, also, make sure you have items that people want to buy. How do you know people are looking for? Follow the trends and follow blogs, um, people on Instagram, just keep up with the trends. I actually have someone that I know that started a Poshmark closet and um, she's got a shit ton of things in her closet. She's been trying to sell things for a while now. I think she started, uh, was it last fall or last winter? Um, but you know, she's not doing so well. She asked me like what the deal was, if I had any suggestions and I looked at her closet and it's like things that people wouldn't buy on Poshmark. I'm not insulting her at all. Like I told her straight up, like, you know, you gotta have things that people want to buy. A lot of the stuff was stuff that's already, well, very available, um, super cheap to begin with and just things that aren't you know, just things that are like plain. But yeah, those are pretty much the main things. Again, I talk about tips and tricks in like all of my videos, but I'll link a few specific ones down below because maybe you didn't see those ones. Okay, next question. How come you only do Poshmark videos? Miss the other videos that you used to make? So I get this question like every once in a while. When I first started my channel, I made beauty videos. Um, you know, I did like beauty reviews. I did some makeup tutorials. I did... Um, you know, outfits of the day, like beauty and fashion type videos. And I did like a lot of unboxings and stuff. And then within the past, like almost two years now, I have switched to mainly Poshmark videos. And that's because Poshmark is just a really huge part of my life now. I still do other videos. You know, I have my um, monthly BoxyCharm unboxing videos. I'm gonna have a few more videos, videos, uh, videos. I'm gonna have a few more videos um, like beauty videos coming soon. I have started working with companies again. I kind of took a break from accepting sponsorships. I literally get so many emails daily asking me to review products and collaborate. And I just, uh, I, I say no to the majority of these companies because, um, well, for many reasons. I get so many skincare companies contacting me. I'm like, eh, that's a tough one because skincare, I feel like takes a while for you to use and see if it actually works. So I can't like try out like four different skincare companies in a month. I'm gonna have more beauty related videos coming soon. Um, but yeah, Poshmark is like a, a really big part of my life. That's why I make a lot of Poshmark videos. But I do understand that there are some like old school subscribers that were here for the beauty stuff and are still here for the beauty stuff. So yes, I will be having more beauty and review type videos coming soon. Next question. Hi, how do you keep track of your inventory for tax purposes? Do you keep track of each item, how much you paid for it and what it sold for? Or do you track by total cost each trip or receipt? Sorry, what about mileage and supplies? Do you just write everything down or use a spreadsheet? Just curious how everyone tracks it. I am now year in as a part-time reseller and can't figure out the best way for me to keep track. So I actually use Google Sheets. I can actually pull it up right now. That's one of the things that I love. You can access Google Sheets on your computer or on your phone. It's great when like I'm out and about and I sell something and I wanna like immediately keep track of it. Um, okay, so I keep track of, I don't keep track of the day that I purchased it. I keep track of the month. Um, so it's all organized by month. I keep, what am I doing? What am I doing? Am I casting a spell on you guys? What am I doing? <laughs> Um, so yeah, I have, stop it, stop. I have the item, um, I have, you know, the, the description of it, the size, how much I paid for it, how much it sold for, the date that it sold. And then on another Google Sheet, I keep track of my expenses. So my monthly expenses, which include like shipping supplies, um, gas, mileage, tolls, uh, just everything. I definitely recommend keeping track of everything um, because you can write off so many things at the end of the year because come tax time, it can be a really big headache if you're not organized. <sighs> Guys, I've been in prodromal, I can't say that word, prodromal, prodromal, I'll put the word across the screen, prodromal labor for the past friggin' almost week now and it sucks. If any of you guys have experience with it, comment down below and let me know how long it lasted. Let me know when it started for you, how long it lasted, and 
what you did because I've never experienced this. I've always had like, well, I'll save this spiel for a pregnancy update video. Actually, I'll save this for a pregnancy update video. So follow my vlog channel if you want to see that because I'm probably going to film it right now. Last question. Hi Vanessa. I love watching these Q and A's. I have a question about providing measurements. Do you provide measurements on all your listings? If not, how do you choose which ones to measure? Thanks. So yes, for the most part, I provide measurements on all of my listings. I think it's easier to do that because, you know, if someone comes along and asks for a measurement, it's already there. You don't have to pull it out of your inventory and then measure it and, you know, waste time doing that. Sometimes I don't measure t-shirts. It really depends on the brand. If it's Victoria's Secret, I'm going to measure it because their sizing is just... <laughs> I feel like I talk about this in a lot of videos, but Victoria's Secret sizing is crazy. It's so inconsistent, which is so frustrating. The shirt that I'm wearing right now, you guys, is an extra small and I'm nine months pregnant pretty much like I'm gonna be nine months pregnant next month I have a huge belly and it's still big on me like this is not no this is not an extra small like no 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 every brand is different with their sizing and even within the same brand sizing can be different so that is it for this video I hope it answered your questions if you have any other questions you can comment down below send me a DM on Instagram or tweet me on Twitter if you are new to Poshmark and you want to sign up you can use my code it is keeping it rad you get a $10 credit and I also get a $10 credit so thank you